And welcome to a very exciting episode of the Fully Charged Show, coming to you from the Lunas Works, which is just outside the Silverstone Motor Racing Circuit in the south of England. This is an amazing opportunity to see, look at the cars they've got here, just incredible cars that are being converted to electric drive. And these are some beautiful classic cars that are incredibly valuable. They're going to be owned, let's face it, by high net worth individuals who want to keep these things on the road. And that is really important, but you could criticise me for saying this is a bit, you could say this is a bit niche. You know, what effect does having a car like this, beautiful Jag, what's that, what's that, what use is that to the ordinary man and woman in the street? You know, that maybe on a Tuesday, just want their bins emptied in a more environmentally friendly way. And look at that. That is what Lunas are doing next. Not classic cars, bin lorries. How incredible is that? So, that is the incredible Lunas works, and this is the Fully Charged Show. Farnborough, Amsterdam, San Diego, Sydney. The world's number one festival of clean energy and electric vehicles is coming to you. Whether it's Fully Charged Live Europe, supported by Mobility Service, or Fully Charged Live UK, supported by LV, we can't wait to see you there. Well, Luna is primarily is, is, a, is a company that's restoring and, and electrifying classic cars. I think that's primarily what we're known for. However, you know, soon we'll see the business expand into Luna's applied technologies, which focuses on the electrification of commercial vehicles. A, a classic car for us and the cars that we work on here at Luna's uh, are you know, anywhere from, from the mid-1960s all the way through to, to the early 90s almost with some of the Range Rovers that we work on. But we're focusing on primarily the, the top British marks, uh, Range Rover, Bentley, Rolls-Royce, Jaguar and Aston Martin. So some of the most celebrated marks in British automotive history. I think the most interesting part about what we're presented with here at Luna's design in particular is, you, you know, you have a car that carries such heritage and such history, but with that comes nuances and complications and, and the, you know, the age of the vehicle. And what we want to do is to ensure that the, the life of that vehicle is, is prolonged for as long as we possibly can. Uh, so we do that through you know, bare metal restoration as we've discussed, but also the up, up rating and the upgrading of certain features, brakes, suspension, uh, steering in some aspects, and also bringing in modern conveniences, i.e. sat-navs, cruise control, heated seats, all of these things that were, you know, they were never seen within a, a classic vehicle from the 1960s. But what we're also realising is that this technology can quite easily be cross-fertilised almost into the applied technology side of this business. And we're learning a lot from the, from the classic side that we're now able to use with refuse trucks, uh, with airport vehicles and other, and other classes. These, these local authorities, they're, they're having to transition to clean yeah. air powertrains. Huge big targets coming down from the government, central government for net zero, right and proper, fantastic, yeah. we all need that. But they're massively expensive. They're five, 500, 600,000 pounds right. for, a, for an electric vehicle. A diesel at the moment is about 250, 300,000. So we said, we're gonna set ourselves a target to have something that's functionally better than the new EV. Right. That's got the clean air powertrain, that saves the 80% of embedded carbon target versus replacing the new but it's about the same price as a new diesel. We want to give them right. an absolute ultimate win-win, no-brainer. But then the th I suppose the, the concern people have with you know, imagining battery-powered trucks 
is the is the weight you know the enormous amount of power you need to get them moving and then the distances they travel but i'm assuming this is a good start point because this doesn't do 300 miles a day on a motorway does it it's doing it's doing a round trip in a local area the relatively short distances kind of between 60 and up to 100 miles a day and what we love about the work that we're doing with 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 councils and local authorities we start by data logging the entire right. existing ICE fleet and and that's been fascinating one in terms of learning that there's many different styles of route, there's many different topographies, there's many different weight profiles, all of that kind of thing. We're able to specify the battery pack, the, uh, the kilowatt hours right. to the exact route. So if you've got a very hilly route, we're gonna up it a little bit. Yeah. Or we've got a route that needs to blast up an A road to get to a rural area, we'll specify a larger battery pack than we would in a town or city right. where they're just zipping around and there's lots of regen braking. And what does that mean? You're not carrying around extra cost, you're not carrying around extra weight, yeah. and that's much more efficient. It's better for the environment, better for the taxpayer. But then also I heard you mention earlier on that it's not just the drivetrain and the mechanics within the thing that you, you upgrade, but it's the actual interior. I love this, the fact that the actual, the, the bloke who's doing driving and the guys who do the bins are in refurbished interiors. Like, absolutely, well, what, we, what we learned, we, we went out really early. So we sent the engineers out on refuse truck rounds. Right. And, and what you do is you, you know, so why a new vehicle manufacturer's never done this, I don't know. But you learn from the guys who, this yeah. is their office, eight yes. hours a day. They're doing a hugely important job. Yeah. And what they learned, silly things, the middle seat, super uncomfortable. Right. So there's a bit of an argument about who gets who to sit gets in the middle seat. Who gets to sit in the middle, right. And what's amazing about our business, we get the guy who trims our Bentleys right. to make the middle seat more comfortable. Wow. But, but on a more sort of serious note, it's, yeah. it's, it's all about, I, I call it sustainability without penalty. Yeah. You should not be penalised for doing the right thing. Right. So we go, we go out to the market, out to the big tier one supplier world, proven tech, and we'll completely upgrade all the infotainment, all of the control systems screens that work when work with gloves on yeah. so they're getting something completely upgraded they're getting something that feels new where i am is just it's a, a absolute cornucopia of beautiful classic cars in various stages of being restored. Look at that, stripped down absolutely to the bare metal we're seeing here. And this is, they're all being converted to electric drive. Everything you see in here will have electric drive. Over there's the powertrain. In that room there is, is the interior design and the materials that they use on the interiors. They completely refurbish the whole thing. Back there is the paint shop. That's where they spray down the cars. Once they've stripped them down, they repaint them. All along here's a load of Range Rovers that are being converted to electric drive. Beautiful Bentley up there, exquisite. Underneath there is incredible. Beautiful high-end engineering all the way along. So when are we going to see the first one of these in service? How soon is that going to happen? Well, the good news is sooner rather than later. Um, we're, we're at a super advanced stage in terms of our engineering. I've got to say, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to say that we've already announced fleet electrification agreements with the likes of Buckinghamshire right. Council, you know, super progressive council and many conversations going on and many more to be had. Right. So, you know, there, there is absolute acceptance, certainly amongst that kind of waste management community and right. local government. And, and we'll, be, we'll be starting to push them out from our new factory, right. kind of the, the new, uh, new facility. Um, so look, we'll, we'll start seeing these vehicles operational certainly next year. Right. Um, so we're, we're, we're really ramping up ahead. So with the commercial vehicles, uh, we're expecting them to come into the, the factory driving straight in from having been working yesterday to roll through our plant in about 11 and a half days. First being stripped, completely uh, back to bare metal, fully refurbishing all of the key components of the vehicle, removing the engine and gearbox, and then uh, re-trimming, uh, rebuilding the suspension, fitting them with new brakes, and then fitting the electric powertrain at the end to deliver a working vehicle back into service just less than two weeks later. So when it comes to charging the commercial vehicles, uh, we're big fans of charging them relatively slowly for a reasonably long time. This is really kind to the battery. It's also much easier on the infrastructure, so um, they don't have to spend so much money putting in very expensive charging posts. We like relatively cheap um, charging infrastructure 
for our vehicles, no more than 22 kilowatt charging ideally. Um, this is, say, kind to the battery, nice long life, and easy and cheap for them to implement. And generally, wherever we look on the vehicle, whether we're trying to specify a, a smaller battery pack or a, a cheaper charger, we're trying to find a very cost-effective way to bring electrification into the commercial vehicle market. So James, when I first came and looked at this, I thought this has just come off a production line. It looks like a brand new truck that's just being, it's like halfway through being built. But I cannot believe, was this, was this a, an old working dustbin truck at one time? Do you know, I'm entirely the same. Um, I'm blown away every time I see one of these as we're moving through the prototype phases. This is a refuse truck, um, had a hard life. You know, it was in use uh, in the UK. And look at it, you know, this is exactly what we're here to do. We take it down to the bare metal, we restore all of this body, we restore, frankly, metal that is rated to go for a million miles. And instead of throwing something away at 70,000 miles or selling it to the developing world and moving that emissions problem down the road, essentially, we've got something that's nearly new standard or kind of zero mile standard. That is amazing. So, so presumably then that, that is what, what we can see here. Now I've had a real good look around the workshop, the, the, the detailed work that's going into the amazing cars you're converting. That's got to be a good training ground for how you then convert something on a much, much bigger scale. Well, as I said, we're a business driven by logic, um, yeah. and it's, it's, it's exactly the same sort of process that we were put into restoring a 1961 Rolls-Royce Phantom 5. Bare metal restoration, get everything down to a sort of beyond factory new standard, re-engineer it, uprate it, upgrade all of the technology, get it into a place where it's almost functionally better than something new because it can be customized to exactly the user's need, and then deliver something that, you know, certainly in the case of the trucks, is the same price broadly, as the diesel equivalent and dramatically cheaper than a new EV, saving all that carbon. Presumably one of the key things, particularly in the dustbin, you know, dustbin truck sure. is the, there's a lot of hydraulics. So the pumps that operate that, would they, would they have come originally off, directly off the diesel engine or was there a, a system within the transmission that was? It, it's exactly it though. So, so it's, it's all we're doing. It's, it's I think we've, we've all got to shift our mindset a little bit from, is it a diesel, is it a petrol, is it hydrogen, is it electric? It's energy. Yeah. Something's got to make something move. Yeah. And it's exactly that. We're able to, through, yes, software and all of our proprietary technology, control those systems. Right. So again, there's no big leap going on here. From and a, you're not having to add extra pumps or anything. You can no, use it's that all, system It's all within. It we, right. we, we try to be as light touch as possible to make the processes almost kind of productionizable as possible, keep the cost at a sensible level, keep the cost, as we say, in line with buying a new diesel truck. But then presumably this is going to take a lot, I mean, just the amount of stuff that you've stripped off this, this framework and then put back on. I'm assuming this takes a long time to convert each one. I mean, I don't know what, do you know how <laughs> yeah. long? Well, let, let me give you, give you a All little right. bit of context. Something like a restoration on a Rolls-Royce Phantom 5, yeah a year to a year and a half. Right. You know, that's a passenger vehicle that's taken down to the bare metal, obviously very bespoke, all sorts of customer choices. This we're really going into kind of full production with. We've got some of the most talented people from the truck industry, from the car industry, all sorts of different areas uh, that are building production processes in, in what, what's going to become Britain's largest remanufacturing and electrification right. facility. And uh, the target, and they're looking good for it, we're going to get it down to 11 days per vehicle. 11 days? 11 days. I thought you were going to say 11 months, no, like less than a year. <laughs> 11 days, that is remarkable. Well, we need to. I suppose we need if you're to. going to do hundreds of them, thousands. you've got to, yeah, thousands. thousands of them. The, the, you've got to look at the scale of this thing, you know, the scale of, of, of vehicles in this particular class. By, by any estimation, there's 80 million, five, six, sevens and eights in the United States, the UK and the European Union right. alone. Right, 18, and, right. Yeah. And at the moment, Big as trucks. we're transitioning, they're destined for either scrap or they're going to continue emitting and continue emitting without the correct servicing in less developed nations, in less developed economies. We'll start with the next facility here. That's going to be broadly 1,100 vehicles a year, which we worked out with an independent carbon audit. Um, eight Eiffel Towers of embedded carbon will save a year. And then we'll be placing factories all over the world. So our idea is you go into close proximity to the markets in which you're operating in. You're creating jobs in the markets that you're operating in. You're building a clean tech industry. And you know what, from a job creation point of view, you'll see and you, you'll get a feel for it. It's not a robot automated type industry, yeah, it's, yeah. it's hands on. So we're creating lots of really skilled jobs and you know, we're, we're, we're really glad to kind of attract that talent.
Well, I just want to say a big thank you to the Lunas team who've given us access to see this incredible facility that they've got here. It is truly remarkable. If you think just a year ago, there was only 20 of them working here. There's now over 100. By the end of this year, there'll be 350 people working at this facility and their new facility that is just over the road, just behind this building. A massive, it's double the size, triple the size of that, where they'll be converting all the dustbin lorries. 1,100 dustbin lorries a year. So what they're doing is critically important. And I love the fact that it's gone from, you know, the sublime to the gall blimey. Very much so. You know, the, 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 the cars that they're converting here are so exquisite. The quality of work they're doing on them is breathtaking. It really is mind-boggling. But now they're doing something that is critically important for all of us. How to clean up the air in our cities is a fairly major, major challenge and we have to face it at some point. Anyway, that's it. Uh, you know, please do subscribe to Fully Charged. Please have a look at the YouTube membership. Have a glimpse if you want to support us on Patreon. They're, all the links for that are, are beneath this video. Uh, tell your mates about what we do on Fully Charged Show because we get to see amazing stuff like this. It's really worth watching. Anyway, that's all. As always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Well, thank you so much for watching that episode. We hope you enjoyed. Robert's just having a little lie down because he's a bit pooped from filming that. So while he's doing that, let me tell you to watch this episode here. If you like that one, you're gonna like this one. This is our most recent upload. Here is a link to subscribe to the channel. And this is a link to our Patreon, if you fancy it.